Hi guys, welcome to the Techverse. How many of you watched the movie Back to the Future? I'm sure you must have wondered then what it'll be like to have a real time machine. I mean, you could go back in time and change a few things you did wrong. From flying cars to sidewalks, a lot's changed since that time. So what did we correctly predict and what advances can we expect over the next three decades? Some of them became the greatest advances in technology in human history, but few technologies never became a reality. So here's our rundown of the 10 future technologies we're still waiting for and we hope that will become a part of our lives in the next 25 years. But before we get started, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Without further ado, let's begin the rundown. Number 10 is flying cars. You wait 50 years for a flying car and then three come along at once. First up is Van Hanna, an Airbus project to develop battery-powered single-seater aircraft designed to follow predetermined routes, only deviating to avoid collisions. Swiveling rotors on the wings will let it begin and land without a runway, and prototypes have already been made. Second, Dubai announced plans to check autonomous air taxis as how to beat the UAE's notorious traffic jams. The Volocopter is an electrical multicopter with 18 rotors and a totally autonomous system. It's essentially a scaled up drone with two seats and up to half an hour of flying time. But if you would like something more than just the airborne cars of 1950s sci-fi or whatever we were dreaming up back then within the good old days, try Urban Aeronautics. The Israel based company wants to fulfill the dream of an aircraft that appears just like the classic vision of the flying car. It doesn't have wings, it doesn't have an exposed rotor, and it may fly precisely from point to point. Urban Aeronautics' solution is to use lightweight but powerful engines, lightweight composite materials, and automatic flight controls. Their ducted fan design, propellers housed in aerodynamic tubes, is powerful but unstable, therefore the fancraft would be challenging for a person to fly unaided. Instead, computer-aided control tech takes over the small split-second adjustments required to stay the car at stable at speeds of 160 km per hour or more. At number 9 we have cyborgs. In some ways, we already have cyborgs. Contact lenses fix short-sightedness, cochlear implants restore hearing, prosthetic links help athletes to match or maybe outstrip their natural bodied rivals, and exoskeletons allow paraplegic patients to steer again. The next challenge looks to be controlling artificial limbs and senses as instinctively as if we do our own bodies. Brain computer interfaces are the newest focus of Facebook, Elon Musk and US defense research funders DARPA, among others. Other laboratory studies have already allowed patients to regulate prosthetic limbs via electrodes implanted within the brain. University of Pittsburgh scientists even connected a paralyzed man's sensory cortex to a robotic hand, allowing him to feel what the hand touched. Combining the strength, lightness and sturdiness of today's prosthetic materials with similar brain control methods would take us into superhuman bionic territory. As a part of a study at the University of Pittsburgh, Nathan Copland, a quadriplegic, has had electrodes implanted in his brain. These communicate with a computer to offer him a way of touch to touch via a robotic hand. Sensory augmentation isn't far behind. Dr. Robert Greenberg folks company Clairvoyance has developed implants that restore vision to blind patients. The company's Orion device may be a retinal prosthetic that uses externally mounted video cameras to relay visual signals onto the wearer's brain. Over 250 patients tried Orion's predecessor, the Argus 2, which translated camera output to optical nerves near the, near the attention. Orion will bypass the damaged eye entirely, sending signals to the visual area at the rear of the skull. Today's Argus 2 vision is sort of blurry black and white television. Orion should be an improvement, but colour and better resolution are within the future. While Greenberg is realistic about the present limitations, he's optimistic that we'll eventually be ready to restore sight to a better than normal levels. He said, I would guess we're a minimum of 20 years away from superhuman vision. Number 8 is holidays in space. Recently, the first sets of humans, other than astronauts, were flown into space for the very first time by a private space company, Blue Origin, owned by the world's second richest man, Jeff Bezos. This was only a dream decades ago. Well, might still be a dream unless you're a billionaire, but we are getting there sooner or later. We still don't have hotels on the moon or Disney Planet on Mars, but the primary paying passengers have enjoyed unforgettable trips to the international space platform. Now, private companies are racing to make space more accessible to non-millionaires. Virgin Galactic, SpaceX, Blue Origin, even Manchester-based Star Chaser Industries are testing the hardware which will safely get us there and residential again. Number seven is a jetpack. Ready for your own optionally piloted hovering air vehicle? New Zealand-based Martin Aircraft Company has your back. Okay, it's the dimensions of a little car and uses fans instead of jets. 
but it's a roll cage parachute and may stay within the air for half an hour. Sadly, there's still no firm on sale date, so you've got time to save your money up now. Number six, mind reading machines. Knowing what somebody is thinking would be a boon to enforcement, suspicious partners or Facebook advertisers, but attempts to match brain activity to specific thoughts are crude and limited. But Professor Marshall, just a psychologist at Carnegie Mellon University, has used functional reconnaissance imaging (FMRI) to scan the brain and identify ideas as they form. His work goes beyond what a word looks or seems like to the building blocks of meaning. FMRI isn't usually time specific. If somebody's brain is being scanned as they form a sentence, the successive ideas within the sentence are going to be blurred together within the scan image. The predictions in Just's study were consistent between individuals, suggesting that our brains handle these concepts during a similar way. However, there are limitations. While broad meanings are often reconstructed from the scans, similar concepts like tea and coffee, fish and duck, could also be harder to differentiate. Also, the topic has got to be completely cooperative, which suggests it wouldn't work well as an interrogation technique, and for now it requires an unwieldy and expensive fMRI scanner. But Just Team are working on an EEG version, which might only need an easy electro cap to record electrical signals in several parts of the brain. He's optimistic about how soon a workable mind reading device might be available. Number five is Robot Butlers. Does anyone believe that when AI becomes smarter than us, it'll solve all our problems or wipe out humanity altogether? Either way, AI might be a game changer. While AI is already better than us at playing Go, chess, and even US TV quiz show Jeopardy, Google's DeepMind and IBM's Watson are applying their machine intelligence to useful tasks like medical research and aviation safety. But will we ever have AGI, Artificial General Intelligence, which will match the all kinds of thinking humans do, using language within the same imprecise contextual way and adapting to the unpredictability of the physical world and emotional people? One man who thinks this is possible is Professor Jürgen Schmiedhuber, head of Swiss Lab ICEA. His long-term machine learning technique is employed in Google Voice, Amazon's Alexa and Facebook translation and doubtless in your own smartphone. LSTM may be a development of earlier neutral nets. He's been performing on advanced deep learning NNs for over 30 years and developed the LSTM approach to offer his AI a more human-like processing ability. Unlike previous versions, it's ready to hold relevant information until it's needed and to forget the less useful data. In other words, it can prioritize useful information to remember and learn by trial and error from its mistakes. It's had impressive leads to sorting images, finding patterns and winning computer games. LSTM relates to the traditional NNs like computers relate to mere calculators, say Schmoothover. It's become the dominant general purpose deep learning algorithm and is now on 3 billion smartphones. Schmiedhuber's former students went on to co-found Google's DeepMind and to figure for several of other big tech companies. Now he's starting his own company, Neonce, and he's hoping to realize human-level AGI by 2050. Number four on our list is the quantum computer. Because the laws of physics hamper the push for smaller, cheaper, and more powerful microchips, the elusive power of qubit, a quantum bit, grows more tantalizing. Caltech scientists recently announced a breakthrough in using light to store data for quantum computing, capturing individual photons in memory modules the dimensions of a red blood corpsicle. It's another step towards a quantum chip, but quantum computer fit the mass market still looks decades away. Number three on our list is the time machine. Now, have you guys heard of people claiming they either went to the past or they went to the future? Maybe it's true and maybe it's not. And who knows if the US have already made a breakthrough but are keeping it a secret just as we think they're keeping the secret of the UFOs from us. A physicist at the University of British Columbia has calculated that it's theoretically possible to travel back in history using the curvature of space-time. By recreating the time dilation that happens near a region, we could fold time into a circle. Unfortunately, trying to do that will need a replacement material called exotic matter to bend space-time and we haven't invented that yet. Not that it's the sole problem with time travel. Number two is an invisibility cloak. Invisibility is simple. It's just a matter of redirecting light so it passes throughout or around the thing you don't want to ascertain. A team from T-Vane achieved this by irradiating an object with a lightweight pattern tailored to its internal structure, enabling them to guide the sunshine through the object as if the object just wasn't there. So it's possible within the lab, but we're still an extended way from Harry Potter's magical cloak. And number one on our list is 3D holograms. 
Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. That iconic hologram of Princess Leia from Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope, looks fairly primitive, but we shouldn't judge too harshly. True workable holograms that use lasers to trap 3D images in 2D planes are trickier than they appear. Yes, you'll buy kits and make your own holograms reception, but these are fixed in time, limited in size and need to be viewed in low light. Today, our greatest way of making holographic images isn't really a hologram, but sort of a VR, a virtual reality, or an AR, which is an augmented reality, or even a mixed reality, and that's viewed through special headgear. Microsoft's HoloLens, for instance, projects the virtual object into a glass visor using an array of sensors to orient the image to your real position. Other companies are working on similar solutions, with the goal of integrating the 3D image into what's really there. You'll be ready to point, draw and move the virtual images, a bit like Tom Cruise in Minority Report. You'll even project yourself into an office thousands of miles away. You're probably thinking, fine, I don't care if it's not a true hologram, if it lets me interact with absent friends and workmates, then I'm in. But if you're a hologram purist, don't despair just yet. Making a real hologram, like taking a photograph, involves recording the sunshine bouncing off an object so that the picture of the object is reconstructed. Holograms use laser beams, creating interference patterns to offer the 3D effect, but this needs some expensive and elaborate technology. It's tricky to do, and still the results aren't great, but researchers at the Technical University of Munich, led, led by Dr. Friedman Reinhardt, have found how to beat the hurdles. Rather than using lasers, the team created holograms using radio waves emitted by a typical Wi-Fi router. The pictures are blurry, so don't expect any mini princess layers anytime soon, but recognisably show the form of the first object. And Reinhard points out that since Wi-Fi signals can undergo walls, their technology could allow us to ascertain inside closed rooms with obvious implications for security and privacy. Maybe you'll finally determine what your teenager gets up to, if you'd really want to know. While some of our predictions way back did come true, we still await the day others will be available. So let's keep dreaming, our dreams might just become a reality. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell until next time. And remember, never stop dreaming.